Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rahil Bukhari. I'm a principal consultant at IM Group. Uh, welcome to part two in a series of IM Group SQL Server 2012 webinars. In this session, we will take a look at the major performance improvements that have been made in this version of SQL Server. Our main areas of focus will be the new column store index feature, formerly known as Project Apollo, that comes in the new SQL Server database engine, and the business intelligence semantic model, the next chapter in the analysis services story. Just a little housekeeping before we begin. Uh, each of your microphones has been automatically muted, just to ensure that everybody gets the best audio experience. Due to the volume of attendees, we'll be taking questions by email after this session, so please do let us know if there are any specific scenarios that you would like to explore further. Finally, can I ask you all to hit the full screen icon on your GoToMeeting toolbar to make sure that we get the best view of the slides and demonstration. Hopefully over the next 30 minutes or so, uh, I'll share with you uh, a brief introduction into IAM Group, uh, some background to the new features within SQL Server 2012, formerly known as Denali and drill into the column store indexes and the business intelligence semantic model, or BISM for short. So many, many of you already know uh, who I am Group are, uh, you're already our customers, but for those who are, of you who are not familiar, I am Group provides strategies, services, and solutions for information management that help our customers cut costs improve profitability, and differentiate themselves from their competitors. On screen now are some of the services that we provide. We help our customers solve complex data warehouse and reporting challenges, deliver content management, collaboration, and search solutions with SharePoint, and provide a 360 degree view of the customer and partners within CRM solutions that can all be deployed on premise, in the cloud, or a, a hybrid approach. We provide our customers with an end-to-end -end service that spans information management strategies through to first, second, and third line support, and we do that through our teams based here in London, Manchester, India, and New York. We have a very strong vendor relationship, not least with Microsoft, who have recognized our innovation and ability to deliver business value to our customers by awarding us with their gold, Global Information Management Partner of the Year Award four years running. Right, that's enough about IAM Group. <laughs> um, so hopefully what this slide is showing us is an overview of SQL Server 2012. Now, what you can see there is sort of Microsoft's view of 2012. They, they see it as three pillars, if you like, that come as part of this solution. So they're looking at it from a mission critical perspective, uh, giving the confidence in the applications that are developed on the platform, and massively improving the performance that you get from the software. You've then got the business insight pillar, which looks at giving the end user the ability to do rapid data exploration on their own data, give them uh, new insight into their data, uh, and give them the ability to produce reports that maybe they've not been able to do before. And then you've got the cloud offering now as well, uh, which allows you to publish your applications to either a private or public cloud. But for the perspective of this webinar, we're going to be focusing on the performance benefits that you get with 2012. And most of those features lie in the mission critical confidence pillar, if you like. 
So we can see the first point there, fast query performance with the new column store index. I'll be talking a bit, well, the session is about this, so I'll talk a bit about that uh, in this session. You're also expected to get faster performance with full text search and file streams. You've also now got the ability to set up uh, up to 15,000 partitions per table uh, by default. Uh, you may have noticed in previous versions of SQL Server, uh, this required some configuration changes in order for you to, to reach that, but now you get that by default. There are changes to SQL Server integration services uh, as it's managed as a server now. Uh, there's a whole ton of features in that, and in fact, we could probably have a, a, a webinar dedicated to that. Uh, but for, for this perspective, it, it's, it's more server-based, there's more management, uh, configuration capability that you can do centrally, uh, there's data lineage uh, uh, facilities now available in that as well. So keep an eye out for that. And there's this new feature called SQL Server Always On, uh, which is for higher availability, and I believe that we have a webinar uh, dedicated to that subject. As I mentioned, in this session, we're going to be focusing on the new column store index, and I'm going to introduce you to the business intelligence semantic model, and specifically around the tabular model, because with these two new features, we can see massive performance gains, gains in terms of querying and reporting. So hopefully we'll look at that a bit more closely now. So 2012 introduces a new data warehouse query acceleration feature based on a new type of index called column store. This new index combined with enhanced query optimization and execution features improves data warehouse query performance by tenfold to thousands of times in some cases. You can achieve this by using the same familiar T-SQL query language. It's not, you don't need to learn any other syntax. It's, you are still creating the, the column store index in the same way as you would any other index previously. So not only can you see the benefits in writing queries of the database, but you can see performance gains in your ETL, OLAP processing, and reporting. And you can typically use tools such as reporting services off of the relation layer to see that benefit. And as I mentioned, these indexes are very easy to build, which I'll hopefully I'll demonstrate. And I guess the overall uh, well, the, the benefit that you'll see from that is that it reduces the, to, uh, the total cost of ownership. So instead of having to go off and create multiple indexes and monitoring uh, on a constant basis, you just set up this one index, which will hopefully deal with a lot of your uh, performance issues. And as we'll see later, we can, we, there will be less demand on memory, less demand on storage, so you can see that the hardware required for some of the high-end performance systems will be less. So the primary benefit that we can see from column store indexes is that it allows users to get much more business value from their data by encouraging them to interactively explore it. The excellent performance that column stores provide makes this possible. Faster performance means better decisions. And I say that because instead of sitting around and waiting for your queries to return, you know, taking minutes or even hours, you can expect data to come back within seconds. So instead of waiting, you can spend time actually analyzing the data. And it's not only business specific, we can see uh, benefits for IT here in terms of design decisions because you can expect faster and more consistent performance from the relational engine now. You no longer need to worry about creating covering indexes on tables 
especially fact tables, and as I'll discuss later, the column store index is very relevant to data warehouses and fact tables in particular. You can also apply them to dimensions, but I'll, I'll hopefully cover that in a, in, in a bit. So you don't need many indexes. In fact, you can just have one single column store index, which will replace all of the other covering indexes. And you can avoid having to create aggregates or indexes, uh, index views, sorry, on top of those tables. That single, store, uh, single column store index could probably meet most of your query requirements now. And we can see a re reduction on the burden on OLAP queues because the faster querying performance uh, doesn't necessarily mean, because the faster querying performance now that can be achieved in processing that data. And I think one key thing to note here is that, yes, now that you can query the relational data a lot faster now, it doesn't necessarily mean the end for OLAP cubes. OLAP cubes will always have a huge uh, flexibility and querying ability that you can't get with the relational model, not currently anyway. So we shouldn't see this as the end of OLAP cubes. We should see this as something that can, be, can benefit OLAP technology, especially around the processing times. And one further point I would like to make on this is that not only are we expecting benefits on traditional MOLAP structures, we can see this benefit, benefiting ROLAP storage as well. Because in some cases you can expect to get the same or even greater performance levels with ROLAP than you did with MOLAP. So why is it relevant to data warehouses? Well, first of all, data warehouses are going to have large data volumes, of course. Um, your traditional OLTP systems or transactional systems are likely to have smaller data volumes than, than a typical data warehouse. Uh, a lot of the queries are reporting-based queries. So you'll be joining uh, fact tables to multiple dimension tables to get the answers that you want. Often querying off the data warehouse could take minutes to hours actually. Um, you, you shouldn't always expect that you're going to get uh, responses back within seconds. And the data itself is updated incrementally. You don't expect typically uh, the entire data warehouse to be uh, reloaded or rebuilt. Uh, I appreciate that in some cases that, that that is necessary, but there's obviously partitioning logic that you can now implement to avoid having to do uh, such reloads. But in typical data warehouses, you're looking to incrementally add data. And I guess that overlaps with the historical data retention uh, point that I just made. And what you see is that DBAs will spend considerable effort looking to do, come up with the most optimized indexing strategy, uh, spending a lot of time uh, tuning queries, building summary tables, index views, and then obviously in most cases you will have an OLAP cube that will sit on top of the data warehouse, not in all cases, but in some cases. So again, you've got to burden yourself with the additional processing times as well. So something like the column store index, we can see benefiting data warehouses because it will sit on top of fact tables and in some cases dimensions, will optimize querying and will optimize processing uh, from an OLAP perspective. 